years, and it wasn't until about eight years ago that our superintendent got interested in the Promethean Board. We are very lucky to have the superintendent we have and the school board we have because they, we have got a Promethean Board in every single classroom except the science room, and the only reason we don't have it there is because of the, the way the room is arranged. If I were told tonight when I get home that he's taking my Promethean Board out of the room, I'd retire next year. I really, honestly, would. This has changed the way I have taught completely. Um, before, it used to be just me standing up here talking, 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 and hoping the kids would, would pay attention, hoping that they would listen. I have got so much more attention from the kids because they know that if they pay attention, this is always my threat, if you pay attention, you get to come up here and do it. Now, that works for second graders. Are all you guys elementary ed? Okay. Well, it even works for sixth graders. All right. Their thought that they get to come up and actually kind of be the teacher for a while, that's really exciting to them. And they love the fact that they get to play with the board, too. Now, when I was asked to do this, I went to my partner and I said, what should I teach? She said, well, how long do you got? <laughs> I said, 50 minutes. Well, we go out for one day or two days. So I'm thinking, I said, how can I do it in 50 minutes? She says, talk really fast. <laughs> so I'm going to start out by just showing you some of the main functions of the board. This is the main menu bar, and this is where you'll go to to make your flip charts. Do not make your flip charts at the board. Do it on your computer. It's much easier, um, more manageable. This, I'll go back. This tool right here, it's a little arrow, and it's called the select tool. It's when you have this, you can click on things and move them around. If you have text, I must have locked that in. Okay. You can move that around too. It's any object, any picture, any object, whatever you put on the board, you can move it around with that select tool and put it where you want to. You can also um, make it bigger, smaller by clicking on it like that. This right here is the pen. And you can kind of, when you hover over it, it tells you what it is. Um, the pen, here you have select colors up here. This is how, okay, and then you can write. Uh, the highlighter is right here, and that highlights things. You can change the colors by changing, clicking up here. The eraser is right here, and, it, and like I said, it really kind of makes sense when you can look at this closely. They look exactly like what they are in real life. And then you can erase, like that. So you've got your select tool, your um, pen, your highlighter, and your eraser. Now, when you make your flip charts, you're going to be using your pen and your text tool, and that's the T for text. Ashley, type in there. Okay, now she, okay, go back. Go back? Yeah. Let's make, let's pick the right color. Okay, and you can change the color of your text by also changing, or clicking on a color here. Um, and there again, if I wanted to move that, if I didn't want it there, I could go to my, my arrow, my select tool, and then move it. Okay? You're going to be using the text tool, the pen, and the select tool mainly to do the, the formation of your flip charts. Um, let's see what else. Those are the main things. You can change the size of the text or the or size of the pen by doing this. Slide it over to this. Uh, your highlighter is the same way. You can like this, or you can slide it over again, and you have much bigger. Uh, the eraser also changes. Oops. Maybe it doesn't do on the. There's certain things that the eraser will erase, and it won't, and it must not erase highlighting. Okay. Um, the button that saves me the most is I go along and I make a flip chart and I make them, I, I save, this is really important, you need to save quite often. As soon as you think you've got it, this part like you want it, save it. Because then all of a sudden you have things all mixed up and things move all around. I hit this button right here, it's two little red arrows. And that takes you back to the last time it was saved. So that saves you a lot because otherwise you're always trying to figure out how was this, where did I do it? And that happens a lot, so don't feel bad. Even for someone who's done it for eight years, I have that problem. Another thing that you'll use in order to make your flip charts.
is your resource library. Your resource library has what I call the clip art. And these are the things where you, this is where you'll get your pictures. Um, let's see. Okay, if you, this isn't really a good one, but this is like if you need to devote on something. You have a choice here. Um, I'll show you how to get more things into your resource library because there's a lot more out there than what there is here. Uh, backgrounds, paper. Okay, just drag it out. Okay, different kinds of paper. Drag it out again. And here's where your selections are. Okay, so go to there, the resource library, the second button in on the top. And it looks like a little uh, camera, one, two, three, start action thing. All right. Um, then, okay. Now I just want to show you some of the things that you can do with this board. Every day I start out my class with penmanship paper. I didn't like the paper that they had over here that was available to me. So what I did is I scanned our handwriting paper. And I made it a JPEG and I just inserted it into the, the flip chart, and I moved it around a little bit, and now I've got exactly what the kids have at their desk that they use, and that helps, especially with younger kids, that they, you're showing <coughs> on the same type of paper that they have. Do I have kids come up here and practice up here? No, because this is much bigger than what they will be writing. I go up here and I demonstrate how to make it. We talk about which step is first, and then we go on. And then they practice at their desk. One of the things that the kids love to come up and do is, like I said, interact with this. In this flip chart that I made, um, it is words with any with sound or rhyme. Okay, they rhyme. So we have corn, we have pan, we have boat, and I have a man. What does man rhyme with? And they come up here and they drag it in here. They love doing this. And then you have to find another word, the word that goes with it. And then another one, pig. Goes with wig, and then you bring the word up here also. And they're and they're capable of doing this. Even little first graders and kindergartners can do this. Okay, one of the things that the kids also ooh and ah over is the magic revealer, the spyglass. And there's um, a pack that you can download from Promethean Planet that has several of these different uh, magic spyglasses. What you do is um, a, synonym, a synonym for center is, and then you have the kids answer, answer, and then you bring it over here and you check. Now, one of the things about when you build a flip chart is everything comes in in layers. There's four layers. There's a background layer, and once it's in the background layer, you can't move it around. All right? And then there's the bottom, the middle, and the top, and everything is brought in in that order. Um, most of the stuff that you see here, is done because is able, is capable because of the layering. When I did this, the words behind here are only. Are the pictures? That is in the middle layer. The bucket is on the top layer. And what I have to do is I have to put the bucket here first, and I lock it down. So when I do this, I don't move the bucket. And then I put the the animals behind it. This, the bucket is on the top layer, and the animals or the pictures are in the middle layer, so it goes behind it. <coughs> you don't want to lock the animals down, though, because then they won't come up. Pictures. Uh, so this one, and then the previous one that you're at with the synonyms, did you make both of those from scratch, or did they come from some kind of template? <laughs> I got them from Promethean Planet. Oh. But I didn't like it exactly the way it was, so I changed it to, into some of the things that we were studying. And that's one thing that you, is so important. Don't try to make everything from scratch your first year teaching. It'll drive you insane. Go out to Promethean Planet. That place is your biggest friend. It has got almost anything you could possibly want. And if you get it and you go, oh man, that's so good, I really want that, but those aren't the words I'm using, well then just change the words. And that's so easy to do.
All right, here's another magic revealer. Here again, it's a matter of layering, and what I did was I put the word correct on the middle layer and put the typing on the top layer so that when I go like this, it reveals it. Okay? You find the, the correct, and notice that it's not on any others. And there again, it's all a matter of layering. Don't start to panic by things and I'll never remember all this stuff. I'll show you later where a good place to go to help you. But I'm showing you right now just some different things that we can do. There are some action objects that when you touch it, it changes your tool. Okay, I'm now an eraser, and now I can uncover the thing. The little word hidden behind it. What is the compound word here? Mailbox. And there again, it's layering. That's the biggest technique, the biggest trick to making flip charts. Now here's something that I got from Promethean Planet that I don't know what they had in here for words, but I didn't want whatever they had. I was studying uh, contractions at that time. So I wrote the contraction here, and the kids are supposed to come up now and drag the two words that make up the contraction. And you can do it in reverse. <coughs> you know, you can have the two words up here and have them drag up the, the contraction. You could use this for compound words. You could use it for, you could say nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and have them scattering of words and have them drag it up into the correct snowman. Uh, one of the games that the kids really like to play, I don't always use the um, Promethean word as a teaching tool. Sometimes it's just a practice tool for the kids. I'm over here in this corner helping a student that's having trouble what do I do with the five over here that are done, done with everything and are waiting for the next uh, lesson? I'll say, why don't you come up here and practice your multiplication or your adding or whatever. Um, they take turns. They just drag up. Then they check each other. And boy, they catch somebody else's mistake if they're wrong. So that's just a self. And then when they're all done, I'll either come up and ask them the answers, you know, if they... Um, get a three in a row. I'll ask them the answers as self-checking, and then they always like this. Maybe. Yeah, there's a sound. You can have sounds added. There's all kinds of sounds over here in the resource <laughs> library, and you just have to put them in here. They love sound rewards. I'll show you some more a little bit later. Uh, they have wonderful tools, Promethean does. And one way to get to them is right here. There's a, what is it, a hammer? And it looks like a wrench. And you <laughs> click on this, and these are all the different kinds of tools that you can use as you present. Uh, we've talked about the, um, well, the pen, the highlighter, the eraser. Anybody familiar with Kid Picks? You probably had Kid Picks when you were a kid in school. <laughs> uh, Fill bucket. This is a lot like kid picks, the, the symbols are. Uh, right here, dual users is another thing that we have in our school, and it's you have to buy it. You have to install it on your computer. It's two pens. Right now, only one person come up here. If somebody else came up with a pen, <coughs> the pen would go really crazy. They'd skip all over the place. But if you have dual pens, and they look different <coughs> than the regular Promethean pens, two people can be up there at a time which is really nice because a student can be up here working like a subtraction problem or whatever, and I as a teacher can come along and say, no, let's, let's work this, this is, you know, just correcting along at the same time that they're working, or I can be working the problem along with them. Or you can have two kids up here doing two different problems at the same time. Um, like I said, that's something else that you have to add on and you have to install. Uh, hand recognition. This, <laughs> this is good. You can write... I don't, know if that's, I don't know if that's hooked up or not. Let's try it. <coughs> yep. You, you write and it flips it into a text. <coughs> the only problem with this is our um, social studies teacher in high school called me up one day and said, Mary, I use that hand recognition thing and it doesn't work. It says it comes up with all these crazy words. So I said, well, I'll come over after school and help you out. So I said, show me what you're doing. And when he did, I says, you have to write 
you know, fairly neatly for it to recognize it. All right, you, got, you can't be all over the place. And his handwriting was horrible. <coughs> and a news uh, thing for this is that <coughs> new function. Oops. drop-down menu, that gives you that gives you some choices. And if it wasn't high that you wanted, it will give you some choices that are close to it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Another some of the more of the tools are the reveal spotlight, which I'll show you. They also have a camera, and the, the camera is very handy. I can do, use that a lot. In fact, there's sometimes when I'll go out to someplace else and I don't even want it for my flip chart, that I want to take a picture of just a part of a web page or something, I'll come back here, open it up, and use that camera. And then put it into a Word document or whatever. It's just like Jing, but it's through the active board. Yeah. Okay, then there's math tools, and there's a ruler, which you see up here. Uh, there's uh, the set square, the protractor, the compass. There's dice rollers, calculators, all these things are available for you to use. Okay. Put it up there. The nice thing about this is that once, well, I'll just take this one out. See how I'm doing this? didn't make any difference. So you don't have to be very careful about drawing a straight line. You can just get it there, start there, draw it. As long as you see the pen, you know that you're writing, and then you can move down and have the line. I also put it up there and have the kids come up and measure the line. How long is it? And then write the answer down. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you make a line with an angle? With an angle? Yeah. Well, there's many different ways to do that. Um, there's a uh, icon over here that's called a pen modifier, and you have different choices here, and that's one way to do it. You know, like in anything, Word, Excel, there's ten different ways to do the same thing, and you'll just find your own way of doing it, which is easiest for you. Hey, um, garbage can over here. Uh, there's this here is the protractor. that around too. Make it bigger. Move it down. Line it up. Have them measure. You can also do it yourself or you draw it in yourself. I can draw from here. Turn it that way. Okay, I moved it. I made part of it. You can have it so that it's filled in. You can have it so it's just the outside line. You can have it so that the lines go together and not be filled in. There's so many choices, and you can find that by clicking on this little button right here and choosing one of those choices. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, one of the things that I think is really neat with Promethean Planet, and I I think Smart was able to do this too, <coughs> is that you can <coughs> insert a media file, you can insert a web link, uh, any type of uh, file like that, sound waves, whatever, and then you make it active and as you're teaching your class, you don't want to stop. Come over here to the computer, you know, uh, type in the URL to find this. So if you do it this way, all you have to do is click on it. The blue blue button means that it's active. <coughs> and BrainPop is one of the partners of Promethean. Uh, they have icons to, so that you can make a flip chart that goes along with the little uh, movies that you made out on Promethean or out on BrainPop. There is a part of BrainPop that is free, but then there's um, the other part, of course, the more extensive part that you have to pay for. And it is quite expensive, but if your school goes along with it and, and you use it enough, 
you may get to talk them into buying it. We have Brain Pop Junior, which is for the younger kids. I'd say three on down. And then the regular Brain Pop, which could be anywhere from three or four all the way to high school. And we have high school teachers that are using Brain Pop. And what it is is just, um, you see a movie. And there's many, many different kinds. And then when you get done, you can actually have a quiz. Yep. And we use our voting, our, our active expressions. I forgot to bring active expressions along with <coughs> this. I'll show a little bit about that later. But we go on, we do the online quiz, and then we have them look at it, they vote and then we see if our answer is the same as theirs. Okay? So, let's go back. That is adding uh, a website. That's actually a website. Here's another little neat trick that kids just love. Okay. The purpose of this is to find the missing vowel sound. What is the missing vowel sound in bed? Well, you have them tell you. Let's check it. Hold your breath, hold your eyes. Oh, are you right? The kids just love that. I know it is a matter of color. The missing part you want has to be the same color that you start out with. So that when you slide it over, now it shows. Dress. And of course the D shows up on both yellow and red. And the yellow doesn't show up on the yellow, so that's why it seems magic to them. Um, one of the things that I really like, this is part of my reading lesson, we're supposed to make the O-O and the U-E and the E-W into words, and all I have to do is, instead of writing them, is drag them down. That's called drag and copy. When I do math lessons, and I have to have dimes and nickels and pennies out there, I used to spend <coughs> much, much time stacking my pennies up on top of each other, making them perfect, stacking my nickels on top, and so they'd have enough to pull off. Well, about four years ago, they came along with a new um, function, and that's called drag a copy. And when you right click on an object, like right, right clicked on that, and there's a part of that file that comes open, and it says drag a copy. Once you have that, and let us know what my, see what my, okay. see where that little plus sign? That means that's a drag a copy. And what that allows you to do is pull off an infinite number of whatever you have, <coughs> which is really handy, rather than stacking <coughs> and dimes and, and vowels and letters or whatever on top of each other. I've done it with pictures, I've done it with many things. Um, here's another save that I use quite often, and that is YouTube, TeacherTube. Both of those places are free. And they've got wonderful different little, um, you can do it as a culminating activity, as an introduction. And I'm going to think you can have somebody asleep in the back seat and, or in the back of the room and they are paying attention now. They love this. Okay. morning I start out my, my day with, um, I have, I teach sacks of math, and they have what they call the math meeting board. And this is how the kids check in with me in the morning. When they come in, they come over and they grab their name and they start putting it on the bottom, with, depending on whether they have a home lunch, sack lunch, or they eat some whole lunch. And then if anybody's not here, of course, it's left over here. So then later on we can talk about who's present, who's absent, who's having school lunch, and who's having home lunch. But in the process, we're not just doing that, we're building the graph. It's not just attendance, it's learning how to make graphs. Um, another part of it is the, the calendar every day. Someone is responsible for coming up and writing the, the date on the calendar. And I have a board on the other side that has the same information, and they go and write the date. They learn how to spell all the months. Uh, my kids in second grade, you know, that's about seven. They all already know how to spell August, September, and October. And that, you know, to me, that's pretty good for second graders. 
Um, they learn the months. Every morning we go through this. And they just, and you may think, well, that was that, but, oh, I know. The kids like that. And you may try to teach them January, February, March, but once you put it to song or to music, it's much easier for them to learn. I have a little boy who absolutely will not talk above, yes, I don't know. That's how he talks. He sings that every morning, and he almost blasts me right out of my shoe. He just belts it. You know, he loves it. I said, oh, if I could only get him to sing every answer, I'd be a miracle. Um, we go through a time. I put the time up. They have to write on a piece of paper what the time they think it is. Uh, we go through money, counting money. Here is the dragon copy again. Just drag it up until they have the right amount. This is the daily temperature. We make a bar graph again using daily temperatures. And we started out with just deciding whether it was hot, warm, cool, or cold, and then we had to add the temperatures later on. Now, later on, right about in December, we changed from a bar graph to a line graph. And then we keep track of it for the whole rest of the year on the same graph. One color is January, one color is February, one color is May, and then they get to compare the different temperatures. Okay? A lot, what was it last year? We had the warmest day in February until the last day in May that we were in school. It was just kind of funny. They all laughed about that. Uh, problem of the day, we have them work fat families, subtract, here's the math, it's pattern of the day. They have to tell me what the pattern is, and we just drag it over to what we think is next. We have a number of the day. A student of the day gets to pick the number. They have to come up with um, four number sentences that equal that number. Everybody wants to be student of the day. And I can remember, never remember who I've had and who I haven't had. This is the easiest way to do it. Antonio was on Wednesday. So put his name down here. And now who's going to be the next? Let's see. Oops, I got two in there. Brennan will be. And that way I keep them out of the pumpkin. Next week or next month it will be a turkey. The next one will be a Christmas tree. You know, I change according to season. But this is a good way to choose someone to be a certain position in the classroom. Every day we also do a writing or a counting lesson. Now, right now we're just counting by ones, but we'll be counting by fives and tens, and we'll be up 900s, 800s before the year is over. There's also many games out there. Uh, if you go out to Promethean Planet, I did not make this, but I changed it. Um, actually, I don't have that one here. <coughs> my, for my um, open house one year, I changed every one of these people into someone in the school. My picture, the superintendents, the, uh, the other second grade teacher, the PE teacher, the music teacher, and I had a question about each one of them, and they had to try to figure out the answer, which they and, they and the parents thought was a lot of fun. But how it works is you click on this, and now you are given the question over here. Allergies are not caused by germs. True or false? Well, they talk about it. They drag it over, and there again, it's a color thing. Now, notice that you can't see this very well, can you? Be aware that when you do your colors, in the first year I did this, I went crazy. I had every kind of color background, every texture background that you could possibly think of, because I thought, wow, this is cool. <laughs> until I had a colorblind student. And about the third day, he looked at me and says, I can't see that. And I said, what do you mean you can't see it? I'm like, God, what is this How can you not see it? And he's sitting in the front row. He says, I'm colorblind. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> you know. So from that day on, I asked, can you see this? And if he said no, then I had to quit change the colors. But from now on, if you notice that most of my um, flip charts have a soft yellow, I don't do white because that's too um, stark of a contrast. It hurts your eyes. So I use a, a soft uh, background. These two colors don't agree, or you can't see them very easily. You've got to be aware of that when you when you make your... Now here's the next one. Now that's even worse, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Now that 
that is probably the best so far. Okay. That's one game. And there again, you can find this out on Promethean Planet. Uh, and then as they answer the questions, they can drag over their X or their O, depending on whether they're correct or not, or whose team they were on, really. Okay, another one out there was who wants to be a millionaire or a gazillionaire. Uh, kids have a lot of fun with this. And what we do is um, we have the question, we have the possible answers, and they're divided into two teams. And 50-50, I go up and cross out you know, some answers. Uh, phone a friend. We make arrangements before we start this to phone another classroom. And then that teacher picks someone uh, to answer the questions. And we call the fifth grade room one day. And Mrs. Zahn said, okay, who wants to answer this question? And nobody will raise their hand. She said, oh, come on, you guys. This is a second grade question. But it's for a million dollars. We don't want to lose for them. You know? So they take this serious. And then as you, you know, get the right answers, you just move the, the red square going up where you have different questions. Now, here are some of the things that... <coughs> Answers or maybe all of the questions out at one time so that they're not looking ahead. You can put some of them, or what we call, off to the side. Well, how can you get them out if they're off to the side? You can't leave them out far enough so that you can pull them because then you can see some of the question. Well, you put them on some shape and then you pull them out later. And what you do is you make your question, you put it in the box or however you want to do it, and then you. Okay, where is it? Okay, right here, this little tab right here, and it's called grouping. You outline, you know, highlight the whole thing that you want to tie together, and then you hit this group button, and now it's one object versus two. And then they're together, like this, you can move them all around until you ungroup them, which now it's not highlighted, and now look, well, sure. All right, the on the hook to yesterday. I promise you, this happens all the time. Okay, another thing. Okay. This is the dragon copy. Will you right click on it? Let's see. If you right click on the object, way down here in the bottom is a dragon copy. And now you have the plus hit, and you can just, and it's very easy to do. If you want to take that dragon copy off, you do the right same thing, right click, and uncheck the dragon copy. Okay. Um, spotlight tool. As a teacher, there's a lot of times I put a lot of information on the on one flip chart, and I don't want them to see it all at one time, because as I'm talking up here, someone's thinking, okay, I'm about the third, so I'm going to start looking down here. Because that's going to be the sentence I'm going to have to read. And I want their attention up there. Yes? Can you right click with the pen? Well, see, I've never used this pen before. Let me try. Yep, you can. There's a button on it. Yep, there's a little button. And there is also on the Promethean pen also. And if my kids immediately want to put their finger on that right, on that little button. It, t and it takes a while for them to learn, don't touch that button, because then you get all these boxes popping up. But I didn't know whether this one did it or not. The question. Okay. Uh, spotlight tool. It's the one with the flashlight. Okay. I only want them to look right here. I can change the size. And I can move it around once I get the X. So that was a interesting <laughs> picture. You can have it reversed too. You can have this blacked out and the rest of it open. It all depends. Another one that you can use, and I use this one more often, is the is the revealer. And to me it's like a curtain. It even has a little curtain pull on it. 
You can pull it down like this. You can pull it from the side like that or from either side or from the bottom up. You can even have it so that, I can't reach it right now, but you can lock it in here or save it in this position so that when you turn the page, it's there. You don't have to pull it down and show what you want. It, it starts out right where you um, halfway down or wherever. I could lock it here so that when I come from the page, it will start right here. The revealer will be set there. Okay? Magic ink. Now that's a different icon. And that's one that has like a swirly, multicolored oh, this is it, uh, design with a pen. And a magic ink can make an object on the top layer invisible. Here again, it's all about layering. This caterpillar is on the top layer. I have a butterfly underneath it. And if you're talking about the different stages of the life cycle of a butterfly, you can begin and do your teaching and then show them, whoops, show them by using the magic revealer and magic pen. I have one where I have um, the United States and I have a landform map underneath it. And we talk about the different parts mm -hmm. of the country. And I said, well, what do you think this, do you remember what kind of um, landforms are over here? And they tell me, I said, well, let's check. And so I'll erase that part and, and it will show mountains or it will show whatever, plains, whatever. And there again, it's, it's layering. The caterpillar was top layer, the butterfly, middle layer. These are called containers. Kids love these things. Um, if I were to come up here and I say, well, we're talking about odd and even numbers today, who can come up here and put uh, the odd numbers where they belong in the green box, the even numbers in the yellow box? Okay, we got someone coming up. Good job. Okay. <laughs> but somebody else comes up and goes, oh, man, if this one's even. No, it's even. Notice it won't stay there. You can set it up so that it does stay there, but doesn't get the reward sound. You can set it up so it returns to the original spot. You don't have to have a reward sound if you don't want to. That's all up to you. There's different ways that you can set it up. Here's one where they uh, put the nouns in. <laughs> you, you know, they like it. <laughs> all right, now. We talked about the different voting, or I talked about voting. This is what I forgot to bring up. This is what we call active expressions. We used to have what we call the egg votes, and all you could do in the egg votes was do multiple choice questions, um, A through F. You could do true and false just by having A and B. But this gives you many more choices. My kids call this their orange berry. Not their blackberry, but their orange berry because the side here is all orange. And when I say, okay, pick up your cell phones, call, call in, give me the answer, they love it. I have it Velcro to their desk, they pick it up, they turn it on, and they will send in their answers. Now, there's different types of voting with the active expression. You can do multiple choice. You can use ABC, numbers. You can go uh, six, of, oh, six different choice for answers. I notice how this green button now has lit, lit up. When I push that, and I don't know if it's going to work now. No, there's nothing connected to it. Um, when I push the green button, then there's a bar up here that has everybody's name on it. And as they answer, it turns yellow so I can tell who has answered it and who hasn't. I can then have it either show the results right away, where the, how, what was the correct answer, or I can just go on to the next question. And when I get all done, I can hit... Right down here, results, browser. I can click on that and it will um, save in the Excel spreadsheet. And then I can go back and I can go look at each question, who answered what right, who was wrong. It gives me a percentage. It gives me how long it took them to answer. I mean, you can find a lot of things out about the test. Another type of question is putting things in order. And here they don't just give one answer. They have to type three, one, Two, they have to put in those numbers in that order. There's also um, yes, no, true, false, don't know. 
There's also a Likert scales. Um, you can do this many different ways. After the end of an assignment or a lecture, you can say, how many of you feel that you really understand what you just, <coughs> what you just went over? You really think you do? Eh, so, so, or you have no clue what you've just, what we've just talked about. And it's, they are so honest when you ask them this because they're, you're not putting them in, in a position where they feel, oh, she's asking me. They, for some reason, they think that I'm not going to find out the answer or something. I don't know. But it's not a one-to-one -one confrontation. Do you know? Do you understand? It kind of makes you go, oh, doesn't it? But when you put it into a vote, they're more open about their answers. You can also type in that, just like a cell phone, they can text, just like um, adult skin, in fact, sometimes better. I haven't used these expressions, because I always use the eggs, and I thought, you know, this year for second graders, I'm going to try it. Oh my gosh, they can text like you can't believe it. You know, and if they, if they can't text, then their neighbor helps them, you know, it's, it's just wonderful. And then their answers, if you have 20 different answers, you can what you call seed the answer, and then the answer pops up on this um, spreadsheet or on this flip chart, and you can just move them around. Is this really an adverb? Let's talk about it. Not maybe so you get rid of it. You know, no one's in jeopardy of being embarrassed. Do they? <coughs> Multiples of four. You can also do um, math problems. They type in one multiple of four, and they we seed it, and there again we put it on the on the flip chart. Uh, by, I haven't done it yet, but the fourth grade teacher has them use the expressions to actually do math problems. Uh, she says, okay, look at problem four in your book. Uh, figure it out, send in your answer. She says, everybody has to do it that way. Or otherwise, you've got somebody up here and nobody else is doing it. Nobody else is paying attention. Votes put kids in the driver's seat. They are responsible now, not somebody else do the work. Question? When their answers come up on there, do they come up in all different colors so you can see which one is your answer? No. Or, yeah. But I think, no, I haven't tried this, but I think you can go in later when you uh, results to the um, spread Excel sheet. I think I can go back in then and see who answered what. Okay. Okay. That's just some of the things that it can do. Now, really quickly, we're going to go out to Promethean Planet. And as I said, this is going to be your friend. Use this. This is why they have it. Um, you have to join Promethean Planet. Has anybody joined it yet? Okay. It doesn't cost anything, but you do have to fill in all this kind of information, and then you have to get a username and a password, and then you can use it. Um, there's two places that I really right now tell you to go to, and that is your resources and your professional development. Your resources. Okay, you can go on and search for, let's see, a lesson on nouns. So I'm going to go to language arts. And now Ashley's going to type in noun. And we're going to search. Now, these, they just started doing this in the last year. These you have to pay for. I've never paid for one yet. These are free. Okay, you can preview them. Yes. You can either do it like this and, oh, is, does this look interesting? Okay, you can't interact with it in that, that this form, but you can get a pretty good idea whether you want to look at it any further. Uh, you can download it then and save it, change it, tweak it, do what, use it as it is. doesn't make any difference. I found out uh, a lady who had made flip charts for every story in our reading series. I thought, oh, this is so nice. I went out and I found one. I thought, oh, right, this is cool. So I looked over here and I found more by this author. Author. I clicked on it and every single story in my reading book she has made a flip chart for. And I don't mean one flip chart. I mean a flip chart that has 40, <coughs> 50, 60 pages in it for that one story. Because a story in our reading unit or uh, books is five day unit, so you have five days of lessons that you're teaching, and she had something in the language, in the spelling, in the reading um, journals, you know. She had something for everything every day. Now, did I use it all? No, I probably used only about six or seven um, 
pages out of that flip chart for each story. But it was something different. It was something fun that I hadn't thought of. I maybe it looked better than what I had already made. Whatever. But it's there for you to use. Use this. This is one of the best places for you to start out with. You don't have to start everything from scratch. Uh, another place to go to here is... Okay, let me do that nouns again. I'm just to search it. Yeah, search it. Yeah, I'll show nouns. Okay, over here, here's your search word. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go down to resource type. All right, you can. Choose what type of noun thing you want. Do you want it as a game? Do you want lesson plans, which is what I was looking for? You can go, does, I want a lesson that has quiz, quizzes or tests in it. I want this. Now, this is really cool because it takes you out to a web or a website that has nouns as an interactive site, not just one that, you know, this stationary, but you can actually interact with it. I use this a lot for our, what we call our workshop time. And now it's coming up with just the web links. Okay, now here's one on a video pronoun replaces noun. Okay, different types of websites that you can go out to. Uh, another place that you need to remember to go to is your professional development. I know you're all sitting here thinking, oh my God, how am I ever going to remember all that I've said today? And like I said, I had to talk really fast. I've got four more minutes left. Go out to the resources to get your lesson plans. And if you can't remember how to build a flip chart, go to professional development, active tips. I use this a lot even in my uh, in services. Active tips tells you most of the things that I just got done talking, but in a small little video. Uh, there's different tabs, active inspire. These are the different types of um, versions that Promethean has had. Now, let's say, question master, I want to know how to make the questions on the test. Uh, how to 